Well, hello there ladies and gentlemen. My name is Black Yoshi. Miami is a pretty terrible place to live. When the weather isn't trying to kill you, the local Florida men are. Maybe it's the heat. Maybe it's the exorbitant prices. Or maybe it's all the booger sugar. Welcome to Florida. And welcome to Vice City. A classic if there ever was one. In case you've been living under a rock this past month, GTA 6 has been announced and officially revealed to be returning to Vice City. So what better way to celebrate this momentous occasion than returning to the game bearing the setting's namesake. A game where the map is smaller than my will to live. A game where it's obvious everyone making it had been watching way too much Miami Vice. A game that perfectly illustrates to you a day in the life of your average Florida man. This is Vice City. And if you like this video, hit it up with a like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content like it. Or maybe check out my weekend live streams, which are, uh, I'm not sure how to describe the streams to be perfectly honest with you. <laughs> But first, a word from today's partner. War Thunder. War Thunder. Free to play on PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Free to play. Thousands of aircraft, warships, and armored vehicles in the most expansive vehicular combat sim to date. Just look at that tank. Doesn't its detail and finely crafted model, including all individual components, make you want to give it a big old French kiss? Don't you just want to hop in your favorite vehicle and make it very, very pretty? In 4K resolution, no less, with euphoric visual audio design across the board, then War Thunder is here for you. And you can attain all this and more using the link in the description where you can claim a premium account, premium vehicles, and much more assorted goodies. There really is no other experience quite like it. War Thunder. GTA Vice City is about a man. A man named Tommy Vercetti. A man who, for the life of him, cannot stop getting hassled about his Hawaiian shirt. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, I like 1978 too, but you know, this isn't gonna be a beer and strippers do. I mean, no offense, but I think that you might turn heads on the runway for the wrong reason. What's wrong with the way I'm dressed? Okay. What's wrong with the way I'm dressed? And boy, you're gonna need more appropriate. Seriously guys, it's a, it's a nice shirt. All the best video game protagonists have Hawaiian shirts. Hell, I own some of them. So unpopular is Tommy's shirt, however, that he did 15 years in the can on account of the Mafia reporting him for his obscene fashion sense. And thus he has arrived in Vice City, looking to make amends and turn over a new leaf by not changing his clothing and committing every crime there is to commit under the sun as he wages a one-man war against the state of Florida, with the objective of becoming the top dog of all top dogs. The king of the Hawaiian shirt clan if you will. Easier said than done, however, since there are more gangs with even more adverse interests towards one another than a single block in Croydon. And worse still, he is flat broke, necessitating him taking jobs from Vice City's weird and wacky local population, as he slowly climbs through the ranks of the criminal underworld to finally achieve the role of big guy. In many respects, Vice City feels like a standalone expansion pack for GTA 3. Same controls, same camera scheme, same shooting, same driving, same engine, with more than plenty of assets shared between them. Which isn't a completely absurd observation, since that's how they originally intended for the game to be, a mission pack for GTA 3 before it even evolved into its own thing. And if you can't already tell, yes, Scarface is a massive inspiration for the game's Miami-inspired setting, not to mention the narrative and how it's structured. I mean, hey, they even got the actual Scarface mansion into the game. So of course, this game is all about money. Getting money. Spending money. GTA Vice City probably makes the best use of its monetary system of any other game in the series. You see, every other game in the series, 5 included, has always struggled to find ways of facilitating facilitating the player in their quest in not only achieving vast swathes of wealth by very morally dubious means, but even more of a struggle is finding ways for the player to actually spend said wealth. In the early GTAs, you'd die, respawn at the hospital, pay off the hospital bills, and realize they also confiscated all your weapons, meaning you'd have to buy them again. But then you realize hospital bills and weapons are essentially the only things your money goes towards. I mean, yeah, you can customize your clothing and get tattoos and stuff in San Andreas and GTA 5, but how much time are you really gonna spend on that when there's chaos to cause and in the face of the fact that you'll probably be starting a new save in a few weeks or months time anyway. With Vice City, it's different, given the entire experience is essentially just a Poundland discount Scarface. It's all about rising from the bottom to the top of the criminal food chain, capitalizing on your foothold in the city by acquiring property and businesses throughout the map. And it's here where the game teaches you some very boring adult things like managing your finances and investing wisely. Because obviously you can't earn money without spending money, and you need that money to spend 
spend it on buying out other businesses to progress the game. Obviously you are suffering from hearing problems, so I'll try again. Where's the goddamn money? Where's the goddamn stuff? And where's my gun? Are you new action? And just like in real life, it's not enough to invest just money into your business, but time and effort as well. Because the Vice City workforce are so coked up or incompetent that not only can they do literally nothing without Tommy holding their hands throughout the entire operation, but neither are they forklift certified. Mind you, the weird thing about these businesses is that half of them require very elaborate setup missions, a bit like heists in GTA 5, and the other half require you to sit in a booth of a strip club as a woman with no more than five whole polygons in her body dances for you while Tommy sits quietly in the corner, not even daring to look at her, contemplating his life and the mistakes he made to get him into this position. I am not joking. You have to sit in this booth for 10 real minutes and spend $500 on this dancing chicken breast before the club decides to finally start producing money for you. The dockyards are another easy one, being the cheapest business in the entire game. All you have to do to get this business set up is complete a time trial and a speedboat. Two minutes tops, it's, it's not really even worth mentioning to be honest. But the wackiest setup mission easily belong to the Malibu, a nightclub. The hottest nightclub in 1980s Miami, if you will. So naturally, it pays out the most of all the businesses, but the setup for it is a... Uh a little bit cracked, because in order for the hottest nightclub in 1980s Miami to start paying out a single penny of profit for you, you have to rob a bank. I have absolutely no idea why Tommy decided to use the Malibu as the staging area for this bank robbery. He could have easily done it anywhere else. I guess any excuse to get out of managing that nightclub he owns. Shut up! I'll admit, it's one of the jankiest bank robbery missions in GTA history. In GTA 3, it was fairly simple because Claude was just the driver. The lads from the Mafia did all the heavy lifting for you. And like every other bank robbery scene in game, history, this one tries to be like that one scene from Heat, except it's horrendously scripted and can fail at any given time because... Yes, that was the escape driver. And then you get to the, uh... The movie studio. A family-friendly movie studio that produces experimental media for the people of Vice City. So naturally, most of the work in this business goes towards advertising your movies. Pretty straightforward until you get to that one segment where you have to take a motorbike and play Mario Kart across all these rooftops where the margin for error is big. All this to get on the roof of this one specific building so you can activate a spotlight. You could do the sensible thing and take a helicopter, but you still have to follow the checkpoints with said helicopter because why not? Dan Hauser, you've done it again. What about the taxi missions? No, the other taxi missions. The ones you have to do after you buy the depot. Okay, yeah, these taxi missions are just like the ones you do in regular gameplay, but these taxi missions are South African taxi missions. What's that? A rival firm is picking up your customers and he actually has a steering wheel instead of a span in his car, run him off the road, destroy his life, and reclaim your rightful custom. Easily the most nerve-wracking business in the game is the Cherry Popper Ice Cream Parlor. Why? Well, because you have to sell ice cream. The bad news is, ice cream is illegal in Florida. <gasps> Go, 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 And the police will instantly go full Terminator on you if they even catch a whiff of mint choc chip ice cream in your hands. I think that adequately sums up the police presence in this game, actually. The police in Vice City are absolutely nutty. Jaywalking? Five stars. The FBI have been called in and the atomic bomb has been dispatched to Florida. Shooting a man? <laughs> One star wanted ratings are negligible at best because chances are the police will immediately forget you exist as soon as you start walking in the opposite direction of your crime. In fact, you can change your clothes right in front of them after rampaging through the mall and it will clear you of two stars of your wanted rating. Because it is written in the constitution that if a man changes his shirt, he is no longer guilty of any crime. Escaping the authorities on anything higher than two stars is a little bit dicey, however, because yes, there are bribe pickups scattered across the map that immediately drop the wanted rating down by one star, but that will only get you so far when the National Guard is breathing down your neck. Which is, of course, why the pay in spray exists. It really doesn't matter what you've done, how badly messed up your car is, or how many swamp vans are waiting to blow you away. Just change the color of your car and watch as the brain rot consumes the police, who are now wondering where the hell you went. I love the pain spray. It's silly, but given the difficulty of actually surviving the relentless police onslaught in this game, I'd say it's more than fair. Hell, you deserve an easy escape if you're driving a car that's had all its tires popped from road spikes. This is the only game in the series I can think of that introduces road spikes and any significant capacity. And by significant capacity, I mean the police will spam them once you hit three stars in your wanted rating. And coupled with their AI being hard-coded to ram you bumper car style over and over again until you wish you were never born,
spawn, you are going to have a hilariously bad time doing anything in this game if you keep drawing attention to yourself. So what are your options? Simple. Go straight. Become a pizza boy. Pizza time. Sure, you can be accumulating wealth from the comfort of your own four-story mansion through your multi-million dollar enterprise buying out small businesses across the city, or you could be working a minimum wage job, lobbing pizzas at unsuspecting strangers until you earn enough money to just barely pay off your rent with just enough pocket money to buy a crate of beer and a pack of ciggies. Because need I remind you, this is Miami. The homeless probably have to pay more rent than you or I do. Pizza delivery is actually kind of a vibe. You cruise around the city in your little moped, which is surprisingly versatile. Style, zooming through the neon lit night streets while some geezer on the radio slowly loses his marbles. You've got to stop spreading these lies or I'll whip you myself. And I'm not afraid. The Constitution asserts a man's right to bear arms at, and arm bears and all points in between. It, Whoever heard of a gun or a bear causing problems? This is all cocky pop or whatever that word is. Oh yeah, and completing 55 consecutive deliveries in one go will net you a bonus of $5,000 and a health increase of up to 50%. Because knowing the kind of crazy shenanigans peach delivery guys get themselves into on the regular, then yeah, you're gonna need it. Anywhere else, I'd say the $5,000 bonus is absolutely insane, but again, this is Miami. You wanna make some real money though? The vigilante missions are where it's at. Grab a police car, grab an SMG, go full Punisher on downtown Vice City and find out why half the population are law enforcement because good lord with benefits like this all for brutalizing and running down civilians for increasingly dubious reasons being a police officer is awesome. The only part that sucks about policing is the fact that other police officers will try running you off the road I assume because they want to be the ones earning four grand a pop for blowing up an old grandma's car. Payouts for ambulance work isn't as jaw dropping however no wonder the buggers are always going on strike all the time. Speaking of professions however there seems to be a a new one cropping up all over town and taking the city by storm. Because wherever I go, I keep encountering these women, these very polite, pretty young ladies, who for whatever reason are more than eager to bounce into the passenger seat of my car. Whatever the reason they might have for jumping into my car, it doesn't seem to matter. The conversation is incredibly dry. We just look at the road ahead, refusing eye contact with one another, until suddenly my health begins to increase. I still don't know what she is doing, she's just sitting there in complete silence silence, head locked towards the window, while the car has an aneurysm, possibly overloading from the weird voodoo black magic nonsense this lady is casting, until finally the car stops, and the nice young lady walks off away from the car as if nothing happened. What did just happen, I wonder? And then I begin seeing them all over town. They all do the same thing. They sit in the passenger seat, summoning mana from the gods to restore your body to peak physical performance out of the kindness of their own hearts. These street physicians have saved my life on more than one occasion, but they are the real heroes of Vice City, and I will not rest until the whole world knows of their heroism. And, well, that's all I really have to say for Vice City. Like GTA 3, Vice City's charm comes from the simplicity in its gameplay laid out in its predecessor, but is a far more developed experience, and far more visually appealing given the colour scheme and art direction. Which is all the more impressive given that this game came out a little over a year after GTA 3. I used to rate Vice City quite low on my list of GTA games, but having replayed it multiple times this past year, I can safely say I now understand why it's a fan favourite, and it has earned my utmost respect and appreciation. And once again, big props to War Thunder. It's free to play, it's a lot of fun, download the link in the description for a bunch of free gear and a week's worth of a premium account. What are you waiting for? Do it now! Thank you all so much for watching, and once again, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for more content just like this. And be sure to check out the live streams I host on Saturdays and Sundays at 7pm British time, nigh on every week. We get into all sorts of shenanigans there, my friends, it's a lot of fun. Special shout out to the greatest patrons in the world, you all have big cojones. Take care everyone, and please, have a great day.